Hello everybody, in this video we're going to show you how to import your graphic into Curlygate. We're also going to explain to you what some of the settings are. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing we're going to do, we're going to go to our folder here and we're going to select our blank folder. This folder has no settings applied. All the other ones have pre-saved settings that are provided to you by Rico when you do your Curlygate installation. Okay, so now that we got our graphic imported, we're going to go ahead and apply some settings to it. To do that, we're going to left click on the file itself, which is going to bring up our settings menu here. We're going to start with the workflow tab. On here, we're going to apply the calculation. What this is going to do, it's going to apply a calculation that's going to let you know how much it's going to cost to print this graphic. It's also going to let you know how much ink you're using. Our next tab here will be the printer tab. This is where you select the plan you're going to be using. If you do the drop down right here, you can see you got various plans. For this video, we're going to use our medium plan. Right here to the right, you'll see your dimensions of your plan or your printing area. Next, we're going to go to our jobs tab. This is where we're going to scale and position the image in our printing area. As you can see here, I have scaled one to one, which is proportional scaling. If I select this option right here, or deselect, and I change the width, you'll see how the height changes as well. So it's scaling our graphic proportional. That's one to one proportion. Now, if you want to go ahead and change the settings individually, you will deselect proportional here. And you can go ahead and you can change the, the height. And you see how the width didn't change, so you can change those individually. We're going to go ahead and reselect these. Over here toward the right, this is where we have your rotation. So you can rotate your image when you bring it in, or you can leave that set of rotation, and it's going to come in just as you see on my screen. Offset X, this is where the image is going to be placed as soon as it imports into the program. You can set this to the left, as you can see here. You can set it to the right or centered. In this video, we're going to put center, and you'll see once I'm done with my settings how the image shifts. Our offset Y, this is how much the image is going to drop up from this point. So if I put two inches here, once we're done doing our settings here, you'll see how my image will drop down two inches. On our color tab, we're going to go to media. And for this graphic, we're going to use start cotton. This here will be our ink type. And this will be here, our method mode. That's our DPI. As you can see, it's 200 by 1200. If you have a graphic that has like dark browns, or dark reds, I recommend using an A pass. If you do a 16 pass, it might make those colors a little darker and you have to change some contrast and other settings. So for right now, we'll keep it a 16 pass. And we're gonna go to our advanced settings. On the advanced settings, we're gonna go to print mode. So color key for the RA4000 lets you add wait times or delay times after each pass. As you can see here, this is the enhancer or the pre-treatment. You can add a delay time and it'll wait a couple of seconds and then it'll print the white layer. You can also add a dry time here or a delay time before it prints the color. Uh, you would use these in case you use a lot of whites. You want to give it a little delay time. So when you print the color on top, it doesn't mix into each other. Black substrate, what this means is if you put this minimum to zero, and you're printing this on a black garment, it's not going to print black inside where the image has black. It's going to use the color of the garment to compensate for the black in the image. If you put a minimum of 20, it's going to print every color, including black. All right, let me hear this goes on to our color correction scale. Basically, what it means is that it starts at zero, spraying ink, and then it gets to 70 and levels off. Our intensity, this is going to be for the graphic. Wherever there's dark spots in the graphic, it's going to pull this white ink. Wherever the graphic is lighter, it's going to put more ink down and more enhancer as well. Right here where it says spread choke, what this means is if you add a negative one here, you would do this if you start seeing a little bit of white peeking out on the edges of the graphic. What this does, it makes your underbase a little smaller. So when you put your color on top, it overlays and can hide some of those imperfections. And keep in mind, if you do too high of a choke and you have small writing, it can't possibly remove that small writing, especially if it's white. Okay, what well, highlights number two? We're gonna turn this on to filling. 
what this means is that when it's done doing its white underbase and it's going to do the color, it's going to print another layer of white. It's not going to print in the whole graphic, only in the areas where there's true white. If you're using this option, you also want to go ahead and add a choke to it because you don't want that white mixing with other colors. Enhancer or pre-treatment gradient. What this means is that wherever the image is darker, it's going to put less enhancer. Where it's brighter, it's going to put more enhancer. The intensity for our enhancer for 100% con, we want to keep this at 30. For 100% polyester, we'll, this would be 60, 65, sometimes 70, depending on the thickness of the material. Layers you should define. This is how many layers we can actually apply to our graphic. So a standard graphic, we would apply top layer, which is the color one, medium layer, which is the white, it would be two, bottom layer, which is the enhancer, would be one. The reason we have two layers of white is the first layer of white reacts with the enhancer and the sum of the ink seep through the material, and then the second layer of white, that's going to be your underbase. If you want to go ahead and add two layers of color just to make the image look feel a little thicker to the feel, you can go ahead and use the drop down and add two layers of color. I recommend not doing too many layers of color as it will make your graphic a little thick. It might not wash well, and you do you are going to have to increase the dry time. Next, we're going to go to our color correction. Gamma. So gamma, what this means, this is the scaling on how black merges into white. So if you add gamma, it's going to make your image a little lighter. If you decrease the gamma, it's going to make your overall image darker. Contrast, this is kind of the same as gamma, but this does the overall picture. If you increase your gamma, it's going to make all the colors brighter. If you decrease it, it's going to make the colors darker. Brightness, if you use brightness, what it's going to do is going to make your image look washed out. Also, if you release, if you lower the brightness, it's going to make your image look darker. Now, for right now in this video, we're not going to move these. I'm going to show you how to move these in the global correction so you can have a more real-time view of what these options do. So we're going to go ahead and press OK. Next, we're going to go to our RIP option, and we're going to use document transparency. What this means is if your graphic here is a PNG, it's going to automatically remove the background to it. If you have a JPEG or a TIFF, you can use Remove Background, and you can use the sliding scale to remove some other background. Keep in mind that if you do remove the background, it can also remove parts of the graphic. So in this case, if I remove the white background, it's also going to catch parts of the graphic in here where it's white, and it's going to remove that. All right, we're going to go ahead and press OK. And then you'll see how some of our settings will change the graphic. As you can see, it's dropped down two inches, and now my graphic is centered. It's not towards the left. Now, in case you have some negative space in this graphic, as you can see here, there's not much negative space. We have some here towards the right and towards the left. To remove this negative space, to get a more accurate reading on our sizing, we can go to our cropping tool and we can use Define Cropping. On Define Cropping, we can move the tabs here to fit more within our graphic. And we'll hit the green check mark. As you can see now, my tabs here are closer to my graphic. I'm going to go ahead and recenter my graphic. So right up here we have our views. So this view right here will let you see that the document does have a background and it's transparent. This view right here lets you see all the areas that are going to be printed. So everything that's gridded and these little red grids, that's what it's going to print. This here will be our standard view. To get this option right here, you would do the drop down and you would select job placement. That's going to bring this panel. This view right here where it says printer output, this is how the image is going to come out out of the printer. So you pretend you're standing right here. This is how it's going to come out towards you. Okay, next we're going to use our global settings so we can see how contrast, gamma, and brightness affect the image. So we're going to go ahead and back to our color tab. We're going to go to our advanced settings. And then we are going to select our color correction here. The first one we're going to do is gamma. So I'm going to go ahead and lower this gamma quite a bit to 0 0.5. I'm going to apply and you'll see how the graphic gets darker. So the areas 
where the color is a little darker, it just made it darker. It's working on a grayscale. So gamma just means that how black trans transitions into white or a brighter color. We're going to go ahead and put this back to one, and then we're going to use our contrast. We're going to go ahead and bring up our contrast to 50, as you can see how the image gets brighter. As you can see here, our yellows got a little brighter. So there are blues. I'm going to go ahead and take this back. I'm going to go negative 50, and you'll see how our colors get darker. Okay, we're going to set back our contrast to zero. And next, we're going to use our brightness. So if you increase your brightness, you'll see how your image looks washed out. Same thing if you decrease the brightness, your image overall gets darker. Let's set this back to zero. And up here you can see our channels, which is our CMYK and white. Now you can actually increase these channels by color. Just keep in mind that if you increase the color, let's say for the yellow, you also have greens and you have some reds. So those colors will change as well. I recommend for any drastic color changes, you want to make sure you use a editing program like Photoshop, Illustrator, or Corel Draw. I'm going to go ahead and bring my yellow up. You'll see how my yellow and the flower and then the writing gets brighter, but you'll also see how my red changes and my greens. As you can see now, our face is not quite white anymore, more of a yellow tint to it. So you want to be careful with these curves here. I don't recommend using them too much. The small changes will be fine. But for any color changes, you do want to use an editing program. All right, some other settings that we have here in Colorgate is going to be under our options, and it's going to be our ink price. For the ink price, Yours will be blank when you first set up. You can have a tech and go ahead and set this up for you uh, to create it on your own. What you want to do, you want to go to the green circle with the plus sign on it. You're going to select what ink you're going to be using. So in our case, it's going to be the RI4000. And we're going to go ahead and apply our cost here to calculate your cost. You want to calculate all the millimeters for each single one of your cartridges. And then you want to divide that by the price that it would cost you to get a full set of ink including shipping and handling, I'll include that in there. You divide all those and you'll get a, per a percentage or how much it costs you per ml of ink. In my case, I'm gonna use 36 mLs, 36 cents per ml. I'm gonna hit apply. As you can see now, I set my ink price to 36 cents per ml of ink used. How will that work? So now we're going to go over here to our file. We're going to go ahead and right click on it. We're going to do a cost report. I'm going to hit OK. It's going to go ahead and rip our image. Once it's done ripping, it's going to come back down to the archive cube and we can see what this image costs us to print and how much ink we're using. If you go ahead and right click on the file again, we go to cost report. And you can see this graphic here is going to cost us $2.94 to print. And this right here will be our ink usage. All right, so if you guys are ready to print this graphic and you got your settings all set up the way you want it, you can go ahead and grab the file, bring it up to the print queue, or you can right click on it and also select print. All right, thank you everybody for joining us today. Have a great rest of your day.